it's your girl Hitomi. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. Thank you for being here and hanging with me. Today I just wanted to show you a gym vlog of sorts and show you some glute isolating exercises that I've been doing at the gym. These are great for making your booty more plump or growing your booty while not growing your thighs which is just something that I'm interested in and I think I'm going to do a part two to this if you guys want with glute isolating exercises that you can do at home just using your body weight because I know not everyone has access to a gym. So these are just some. There are so many glute isolating exercises. I'm not a trainer, so just be careful if you decide to try these, but they're pretty straightforward and pretty simple. So let's just get into it. Afterwards, I'm gonna chat with you guys a little bit more about body image and just things like that. So let's get into the workout. This is how I normally start my time at the gym. I wash my hair about every three days. So this is one of my go-to hairstyles so that it doesn't get super oily or dirty from the equipment. I just wrap it around itself and then wrap it once again into a bun and it stays pretty secure throughout my whole workout. And then I'll just get my headphones on. I always get questions on my headphones. These are just by Audio Technica. And I'll start off with cardio, just a nice little warm up to get my blood pumping. And this is called the Jacob's Ladder Machine. I love this one because it works the entire body and all you have to do is clip this little belt around your waist and the wire kind of pulls and resists you against the ladder, which is essentially an infinite ladder that you climb. And I definitely feel this in my arms, in my legs, and in my core. And I'm going a bit slow this time because I was extremely sore from a previous workout. So I'm definitely pacing myself here. And if I don't have that at my gym, I'll just use the elliptical which I'll normally do 35 minutes on because it is much easier and I also run if they don't have an elliptical so I'll just do many different forms of cardio as a warm-up for 10 to 35 minutes and then after I'll take my sweater off because I like to get super sweaty and then and then take it off it's kind of random, not really a big deal. And I recently started deadlifting and I'm really just trying to work on my form, but I just put 10 pound plates on either side. I'm sure it's not the best and that's why I'm not going to break this one down too much because I'm still refining it. But I'll do about three sets of 12 on this and I just feel like this activates so many different muscle groups. And then I will take a 10 pound plate and use this bench. I don't know what it's called, but I really love this. This is great for glute isolation and also tones the lower back and basically you just lower and squeeze the glutes as you lift up, inhaling on your way down, exhaling on your way up and you can see my glutes are just really squeezed tight the whole time. And once again, I'll do three sets of 12 on this as well. On to the next one, I'm just taking two 10 pound plates and adding them to either side of the Smith machine, which is one of my favorites. It really helps you elevate your typical donkey kick and make it a little bit more challenging. I love these so much. You can add as much weight as you want on either side and try to really keep your knee and your thigh at a 90 degree angle. And you'll feel the burn in this one for sure. And for this this workout in particular I did three sets of 15 just because I know I can push myself a little more in this area next are hip thrusts so I just got a little mat for under my knees and you're basically going to inhale lower down bringing your hips to your heels and exhale use your hips and your glutes to thrust forward it seems like a weird movement at first but it really really works and i love doing these with the smith machine you can try this initially without any weight and just see how that feels just using the bar alone so that you can once again make that mind muscle connection because it really does make a big difference when you can feel the muscles that you're working i did three sets of 15 on this as well anything that i feel like i can really push myself past my comfort zone I try to do exactly that and really just see how many how many sets I can do. Next are hip thrusts. I love doing these with a bench and a weight, but you can also do these just lying on your back and raising your hips up. And I did three sets of 15 for this one as well. And boy, will you feel the burn if you do these with a weight. It feels really good. And I try to make sure that my knees don't go past my toes 
nose on this one so trying to keep that 90 degree angle i don't know exactly what this machine is called but i'm pretty sure most gyms have it and i just adjust the weight to about 30 pounds and lower the resistance band to a little bit over knee height and i just secure my foot and kick back it kind of looks like you're ice skating or scootering or something like that these are also so activating and i will just do about three sets of 15 on each side and sometimes i will adjust the weight and do kind of a pyramid so i'll start with a lower weight and then slowly make my way up to a higher weight and then slowly make my way back down and that was my workout for this day i love following my workout with a steam to sweat out any toxins and just get dripping in sweat in case i didn't throughout my workout and then i'll take a cold shower and my workout is complete that was pretty straightforward, I think. Let me know if you decide to try any of these. I also forgot to add in my stretching at the end. I always stretch after my workouts and I love using the foam roller just to get into the deep muscle tissue. That feels amazing and just such a nice form of self-love after a workout. And um, also, it's really nice to stretch in the sauna. I'll just do a Paschimottanasana forward fold in the sauna and I feel like my limbs are super nimble and warmed up so I can stretch pretty deep but I'm also careful not to like overstretch at the same time. I actually don't even have a gym membership. I have been doing the free trials of different gym memberships for the past month because I'm not ready to commit to one since I'm traveling. I'm in Peru right now but okay I had just recently started working out again for real. I took a really long break and I always mentally just thought of myself as a gym rat because when I moved to Maryland from New York, I was working out every single day because I had nothing else to do because I had no friends. And so I really learned a lot about working out. I actually trained a few people without a license. <laughs> they just kind of were like, hey, you have a really nice body. I want my body to look a little something like yours. Could you train me and just show me what you do? And so I trained, I think two or three people and they just paid me in cash which was really nice and over the years I've still considered myself that gym rat that person who just goes hard at the gym and works out every day and I was thinking about that like a two months ago in my little apartment and I was like wait I genuinely have not worked out in almost six months at the gym so I started going again I just really want to get in the best shape of my life this year and uh, I'm sure that a lot of people are also feeling that way at least from what I've seen. More so for me I've been wanting to do things every single day that over a long period of time will make a very big impact on my life and I think that change does come in those little shifts. That is what working out has really been for me is a way for me to anchor into self-love every single day so that I can remember my worth and refocus on what my goals are because it's really easy for me to doubt myself um, or not easy but I, I'm very critical of myself so when I am working out and doing something positive for myself I'm like oh yeah I am worthy of these things that I'm working towards or um, my body is good enough and I am worthy of love and one positive act of self-love so easily leads to another one and another one and another one and becomes a ripple effect and um, that's also how my yoga journey has been which my yoga is certainly not a workout. It does keep my arms like pretty, pretty toned. I mean, if I'm gonna say so myself, they're not huge or anything, but um, yoga is definitely my meditation and it's something that preps my mind for meditation. So after my asana practice, I'll drop into some breath work and then some visual meditations. And doing that every morning is also just an anchor of light. And every time I'm on my yoga mat, all I can think to myself is this is the most important part of your day. This is the most important thing that you will do because the energy and presence that you're cultivating here will be carried with you throughout every single thing that you're doing. It feels really fulfilling on a spiritual level but then also physically I felt like I wasn't very proud of my body. I would look in the mirror and just not feel like I was at my optimal state of health if you will because I do spend a lot of time editing especially when I'm in New York. I feel like I just constantly want to be making content and creating things and planting seeds for other projects. I'll just just spend hours like pretty much the whole day sitting down editing and that doesn't feel good when I don't have a workout or I'm not going for a run or doing something to fully move that stagnant energy except for my morning yoga practice so um, there are just so many reasons why I wanted to get back into working out I guess I'm just falling in love with working out again after what feels like a very long time and 
I'm just really grateful for it. It just feels like another outlet that I've kind of forgotten about. Every time that I think about going to the gym, I even if I'm exhausted, I just know that it's gonna feel so good after I'm done. And I think one of the things that a lot of people struggle with, especially after a certain point of being consistent with going to the gym, is that it stops being fun and exciting and you just lose inspiration and motivation to go to the gym. And just my biggest tip for that is find new workouts all the time. Whenever I see videos on Instagram of workouts that look fun or that look like they could challenge me, I save them and I try to diversify my workouts. That's why even with this video, I'm like, this is just one day in my gym experience. Like it changes so frequently. So I'm always saving different workouts that I see on Instagram or even on YouTube. I'll just look up videos of certain things that I wanna work on because there's so much information out there. And also I don't think overthink going to the gym. If I they have a thought, oh, I should go to the gym. I don't think about it. I literally leave my house and go because uh, that's something that I would get trapped with in the past. Is like, okay, I'm gonna go to the gym then, but I'm hungry, should I eat before, should I eat after, and then I'm gonna have to take the train, and oh, it's a transfer because there's a delay, so I have to take a different route, and then it's cold out, and then I have to bring a change of an outfit, like I don't wanna do all that, do I shower there because then I'm gonna be cold on the way back, like all these little thoughts and kind of mini excuses as to why going to the gym is going to be like a really big effort and not worth it, and so now when I think, oh, I should go to the gym, that's gonna be really good for me and good for my mental health right now, I just, I leave it there and I don't indulge a million excuses why I shouldn't go. It's just a little mental game for me, so I don't know if that will help you at all, but I just I just leave and I don't overthink it too much. The same thing with my yoga practice, to be consistent with something every day where you do kind of have to face yourself and be present with yourself, it can be challenging and sometimes you may just be too lazy to do that, too lazy to work out or too lazy to meditate and um, just rest into just your bed or whatever other work that you have to do, but I try not to think about it. I'll literally crawl to my yoga mat in the morning and just start moving my body and let my body speak more than my mind. And that, that has been really, really helpful. And then also, I think people get a little bit shy in gym environments when there's so many other people who maybe seem like they know a lot more about working out than you or you may be new to it my sister she doesn't like going to the gym for that reason but everyone is literally just looking at themselves in the mirror like everyone is fully minding their own business if you put your headphones on and put a really good song on just allow everyone else to disappear everyone is truly looking at themselves and in their own zone trying to like focus on their workout and i promise you they're not solely just eyeing you and staring at you and what you're doing. If they are, which can happen, uh, just maybe tell someone. <laughs> People have like taken photos of me at the gym unknowingly and that was really creepy. So yeah, if, if that is the case, you could probably tell someone. Those are just a few tips. And in regards to my relationship with my body, I've made many videos talking about this, uh, just struggling with body dysmorphia or just struggling with negative body image and low self-esteem. And I honestly, the past six months that I haven't been working out, I have been eating pretty much whatever I want as a vegan. And I, I, I have gained a little bit of weight and I just felt like really proud of myself for gaining weight for some reason. I know that sounds weird, but I, I felt like so content with the fact that I wasn't freaking out about it in any way because although I am more on the slender side and always have been, I've always been worried about my weight and worried about gaining too much weight or just worried about it not looking good or I don't know, just connected to a certain number on the scale which can be really unhealthy and that's why I stopped weighing myself for the most part. But I noticed myself just getting a little weight in my stomach area or maybe in my thighs or in my arms and I just felt like my connection to myself and my spirit has been so strong lately that I didn't think twice about it and it honestly made me love myself even more. I'm gonna start tearing up because, I don't know, I just remember looking in the mirror and being like, oh wow, there's like, this just looks a little bit different and and that's totally fine. Like there's no other story that I have to attach to this right now and I think that a lot of negative uh, body image and self-esteem of course comes from conditioning in the media all throughout our childhood and up until this point but also it's this repetition this reinforcing of these negative beliefs that continue to perpetuate them in our day-to-day -day lives and the more that i have connected to people who make me feel safe within my body within my being uh, the more that i've connected with people who value me for more than just my physical appearance <laughs> the more that i have built like 
deep self-confidence and self-love and the same thing goes for my spiritual practice just seeing my ability to do good in any room in any situation with this entire existence as a whole really also sets me free and reminds me of the gift that it is just to be just to be alive and to be healthy which is something that i know is so fleeting and when i'm 97 years old i'll look back at this time and think about how lucky i was when i see someone i will see them how they look visually but for me to love someone for me to fuck with someone for me to like align with someone and really connect with someone has absolutely nothing to do with their body and i think that's true in so many different circumstances i have met some of the most beautiful people just in the world in my world and their beauty had very little to do with their appearance not saying they weren't physically beautiful but their beauty lied within the way that they carried themselves the way that they lived their life the way that they walked upon this earth and there's nothing that can replace that inner beauty and that has really helped me release intense expectations of what i look like externally when I know that my spirit is what is really going to make me glow from within and when I'm 97 years old that is what people will be drawn to is just the way that the way that I make people feel I think about time a lot which can make me very existential but it helps me to have perspective in the present day and helps me to release the little anxieties or little worries or maybe negative thought patterns that can govern you know my actions or my relationship with my body and just remember I'm so blessed for so many reasons, blessed to be healthy, blessed that I can take a deep breath and it feels good, that I can walk, that I can taste food, and bringing things down to that simplicity, it's like I want to do nothing more than love this body and worship it for everything that it is doing for me. And that's another thing, like when I do my yoga practice, I feel like I'm making love to every inch of my body through my awareness, I just feel uh, reconnected to that utter gratitude for this this vessel that is working and fully functioning that not everyone else gets to experience in this life you know all I want to do is keep pouring love into every inch of this physical body and it just makes me want to cry I cried last night after I, I did a yoga class led by an amazing teacher I also feel like I'm at this age 22 years old where the thought patterns and habits that I'm doing in this moment are going to become even more deeply ingrained as time goes on um, which at the same time I know that we can completely shift our entire reality and our inner reality in any moment I also know that it's easy to get set in your ways at this time in your life I want my way of life that does become familiar to me to be so full of light and of nurturing on literally all levels nurturing conversations nurturing workouts yoga practices meditations and the gifts that i bring to the world i also just want them to be nurturing as well also i think that when our own foundation our own relationship to ourselves is so strong and is so fulfilling we can automatically know when something is entering into our lives that is not at that same level of integrity that we're treating ourselves and also helps you to pick friendships and romantic relationships more mindfully when um, you know your worth and you know how good it feels to be loved unconditionally by yourself then you're like oh this person isn't meeting me at the level that that i'm at or the level that i deserve to be treated like i can see that and release it and not have attachment to it i don't know when i went from talking about the gym and working out to talking about deep spiritual healing but that's just always what seems to happen on my channel but um back to working out it's just great for the old mental health and it's great to have a healthy relationship with and yeah i'm just excited for this new journey in my life i want to do an update video in like six months and then at the end of 2020 of my little workout a little workout montage and a little montage of trying to get in the best shape of my life because even though maybe i look slender i look like i'm fit i really wasn't working out and my endurance was like not the best so I just want to be able to run further and do more lifting and be able to deadlift more I'm just really excited for all of that so here's to those goals and to the little effort that we can make every single day to make a big difference in our lives um, thank you so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the video soon bye